Hello again, everyone. I am back with yet another serious and eye-opening message. And the title and topic of this mess or subject of this message is Christian persecution. And th to be honest, this isn't really an easy topic. But before I get into things, I'll just like first of all say, if you're not spiritual, you don't believe in the spirit realm that there's a God, that there's a devil, there's a heaven, that there's a hell, then and you think everything is a joke in the game, like I've all often see on court shows, all these trashy, uh, sleazy, like I've all, like, you know, I see on these, these, uh, court shows, these talk shows and stuff, but anyhow, if you don't take anything seriously and you think everything's a joke and a game, don't, please don't listen to this. If you don't believe in such thing as a new birth or Christianity, or you don't understand what that life is about, don't, don't, don't listen to this message. Just go look at some other foolishness on YouTube. But anyways, I also want to start out by saying I'm a, I'm a woman, okay? I'm a female, and I wish y'all would stop, you know, referring to me using masculine pronouns. I know my voice is heavy, but please don't do that, because if you do, then if any of y'all do that stuff, I'm, I'm gonna just delete your comment. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, care how, I don't care how nice or complimentary or insightful that it is. Don't refer to me as male, because I'm not male. I'm female, okay? Y'all claim to be the, against this transgender, pagan, you not sick stuff. I, I told y'all about this. Don't refer to me as being female, as being male. I'm a female, okay? In her mid-30s, okay? So please stop the nonsense and the foolishness. But moving forward, Christian persecution, okay? So we know that I've known for a long time that this was, you know, that, that, that something like this is coming because my late pastor, you know, talked about it as early as 1990, okay? Which was a little over 30 years ago now, going on 31 years. Like, all of a sudden now, everybody want to make videos about it and stuff, and, you know, uh, I've known it for quite some time, so why didn't you say anything about it earlier? Because before this crisis hit, I thought, you know, it was a ways off, and also the rapture is a ways off, but ever since this current so-called health crisis, which has been politicized and stuff, you know, ever since it's come up, you know, things have gotten, you know, they t they've taken a lot of our freedoms back away from us, it's, it's why it's an excuse for it. It's also an excuse for them to shut down the church. And by the way, speaking of which, I heard that up in Canada, they 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 put a they put one pastor. I don't know how many is is in jail or whatever. They put one in jail because he refused to, you know, uh, shut down his church. You know, because of COVID nineteen. Okay, and anybody with half a brain, anybody spiritual and stuff, knows that you know they're not closing down the churches. You know, for 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 the safety of the public. I mean, they're the government is, is composed of reptilians, like, and it's like Yahweh Rule said, they're just demons behind cloned bodies and stuff. And they're the ones that's, because this is really a spiritual battle. It's not a matter of some idiotic disease or something, and which is caused basically by uh, 5G radiation. That's why this when all our problems begin when they in, installed all these LTE, the, the new gen, generation of LTE, LTE, which is long term evolution, or fifth generation. Uh, Ill, um, long-term evolution. We install these, these um new technological uh radio waves and stuff around the world and stuff. And that's that's what causes all the trouble and stuff. And sadly, even a lot of believers are not even aware of this. They think it's just some virus. They follow the media narrative. That's why y'all y'all don't even really pay much attention to fake news. I mean, pay some attention to the news so that when things come up, it won't catch you by surprise. Like. Once again, I kind of made it mistake again, you know, about the, you know, the gas shortages and stuff that kind of hit us recently, as well as that, that thing that's going on in Israel right now. So my late pastor used to always say, and speaking of which, please, please watch those sermons. Please listen to those sermons, because trust me, if you really got something, if you're really ordained to this, then you're not going to be able to stop listening to him, because you're going to hear things. I don't have time to go back, you know, preach everything, you know, go back over everything he, he did, but, um, once you believe me, once you start listening to them, you ain't going to be able to stop because you're going to hear things that you don't even hear most pastors on YouTube preach. No offense, some of them are even men of God, okay? But you're going to hear things that they're going to talk about predestination, serpent seed. You know, pretty much the same topics as William Branham covered, who's a messenger to the seventh church age. But anyway, speaking of which, and I'm on this, I'm back on the subject. I'm trying to make a point. <clears throat> but anyways, and... and now, I've learned recently, yesterday, as a matter of fact, that Geno Jennings, you know, that famous preacher, he's kind of famous, came from, uh, comes from Philadelphia. He goes around the world doing missionary work and preaching the gospel and stuff. And uh, he said that 
you know, up in Canada now, it's, it's basically kind of a jail sentence. I mean, preaching against homosexuality and lesbian. I'm going to just say preaching against the rainbow people, the LGBT community, could get you put in jail because a number of years ago, there was a preacher from here in America that went over to Sweden, do some missionary work, and he had preached against, you know, homosexuality and stuff. And they put him in jail for six months. As y'all very well, in case you didn't know this, Sweden has, um, Sweden is a very liberal country. Up, I, and I think Norway and Finland is too. And in recent years, the past couple of years, I would say, a woman has said, I read uh, sometime last week, a week or two ago, to be exact, there was a woman that said that they've been experiencing profound drought there. I said, hmm, I wonder why. But anyway, I'm going to let y'all figure that out because the Bible says, touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Okay? And now Canada has, you know, gotten to that point. Even Joe Biden recently signed some kind of bill, you know, making a hate crime attack Asians and stuff. And of course, I believe that, I wouldn't go as far to say it's a false flag event, but it's just a exaggerated, you know, media, false media narrative, make, make Asians look like, you know, victims and stuff. And this is my really my subject for this message, but the 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 I don't to be honest with you as a whole, not individually though, because I have you know there's there's Asians out there, Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, and other Southeast Asians. They they're our brothers and sisters in Christ. They're they're born again believers. So this is about you know this isn't speaking out against them or something because I know they're not racist or anything because one of the marks of one of the fruits of the spirit is to be able to love is to love your neighbor as you do yourself, especially your brother or sister in Christ. But anyhow, Asians are notorious, and I'm be just I'm be honest, they're notorious for their hatred of blacks and stuff who are the real chosen people. And the media got nerd see see versus did this Black Lives Matter thing and now they own to the Asians. So I can't take the media seriously more because cause even with this current health crisis and you know their intentions behind it, they 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 pretty much lied about everything. Okay, so I can't believe anything they say anymore. I mean, it, but not that I had much respect for them before, but my respect for them has diminished even more. But back to the subject at hand concerning, you know, the coming persecution of believers. To be honest with you, I don't know all the details, but I do know that, that it's going to involve, you know, incarceration and possibly overtaxation and, you know, padlocking church doors and even martyrdom. Okay, because, you know, in 40 some countries around the world, this is already happening mainly countries that are communistic and under a dictatorship like China and North Korea and even Vietnam and um, and maybe even Turkey. If, if not that, then it's countries that are predominantly Muslim, which has no tolerance towards believers and, you know, uh, biblical, true biblical Christianity. They, they hostile towards the church. Okay, they always been that way. It's been that way for thousands of years, you know, with the, with the Muslim religion and to a certain extent, the Roman Catholic religion as well. But anyways... I don't know the details, and be honest with you, I honestly don't want to know. I'd rather stay in the dark about I don't go on YouTube looking for videos about it because most of these people are talking about they've seen this or that or the other. A lot of times, either their lives, if you look at their lives and, you know, how they dress and so forth, they're still out in the world, and so they're still very worldly, especially Christians over here in the West and, you know, in the U.S. and Canada mainly. They claim they've seen, you know, vision stuff. Oh, I know it's going to involve incarceration and some other unpleasant, maybe some other unpleasant things, okay? But I, but the only thing I can tell you is I've seen stuff like this and I had dreams about this, okay? And dreams, if I'm being honest, dreams and visions have to, you know, be, have to be congruent or have to be harmonious with the, the word of God, okay? Because if they're not, then they're worthless, okay? Now, like our, our dreams and visions, this isn't my subject either for today, but the uh, dreams and visions, I mean, they shouldn't they shouldn't come ahead of the word of God. But anyhow, uh, I've been shown in dreams and times past and be honest with you, when the rapture finally came in some dreams, I mean, I'm in jail or in prison and the other dreams I'm free. You know, I'm not I'm not incarcerated. I guess I'm kind of on the run or something. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm a fugitive, so to speak. But anyways. Um, I'm going to just really keep a long story short without going into too much detail since, you know, my time is limited. I'm going to just say that, you know, the kingdom of darkness is supposed to come after us, but we're supposed to get through. And I told my doctor this that I've been talking to for nearly eight years now. I said, they're going to come after us, but we're going to get through it. OK, we're going to be all right. And uh, and also when they when they talk about, you know, the coming persecution of belief, spirit field believers, 
they always make it look like, of course, David J. Wilkerson didn't do this, thank God, but they always make it look like that, and a lot of these folks had to stop following because they make it look like they're going to kill everybody and stuff, when the Bible very plainly says that there's going to be believers that are going to be alive and remaining when Christ comes back. And I don't know about y'all as individuals and stuff, you got to find this out for yourself, but God has told me, God's made me a promise that, you know, I'm, I will live, you know, when that time, I'll be alive when that time comes, okay? Since we live in perilous times, we, we probably, we're going to have some close calls and, you know, we're guarding whether it's personally or on an isolated, you know, basis or something, like, you know, nearly having a car crash or um, getting a terminal, getting some kind of illness or something or whatever, or even, you know, people, you know, criminals trying to get to us or whatever. But anyways, we have some close calls, but the Bible promised that we be, there'll be some true believers that are alive and remaining when Christ come out. They won't have to chase the death. They won't have to die, but their body is changed from mortal to immortality, from corruptible to incorruptible. And I saw, I've seen this for myself, like last fall, I was feeling down about, you know, the subject that I'm dealing with right now. And um, that, to be honest with you, that very night, I had a dream that these SWAT team looking people, you know, with those helmets and stuff, they all wearing black and they got all those shields and those guns. Y'all seen, y'all seen what, what happened, you know, y'all seen what those individuals wear and stuff, you know, in, even in prisons and stuff when they got to, you know, do a force extraction of an inmate, they were wearing things like that. And then they turned the machine guns. It was basically kind of something out out of a, it was keen to something out of an action movie or something. They turned the um, machine guns towards me and stuff. It started like shooting off, like, like, bam, 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 bam. And all of a sudden, my body had become transparent and stuff. And the bullets went through me and I didn't feel nothing at all. I recall in the dream not being worried and not being in fear. And the thing that inspired me when my late pastor would bring up you know, the coming persecution of believers, and this was back in the first half of the 90s, y'all, when he prophesied this, and um, when he said that, he said, I'm not worried about anything, he said, I'm willing to die, <clears throat> he didn't say in an explicit term, but he said, when they take Brother Jim out and kill him or whatever, and he said, I may die for, you know, you know, making fun of homosexuals one day, because they, they don't, eat, they got to point that, they don't even want you joking about, you know, them or whatever, it's like the demons, these reptilians out here, the Illuminati, they want you to be serious and be sad and depressed all the time. But it's all right for them to, you know, get their comedians. And, and most of them are demons as well. They're just blaspheming God that kicked them out of heaven. But it's all right for them to make jokes about the Bible and tell jokes about, you know, uh, butt sex and, and pedophilia and stuff. I mean, nothing's off limits for them. But anyways, they they day they, they, they reckoning is coming. I mean, it's all right. Keep picking if you want to. But anyways... I mean, I'm looking at a scripture. I want to give y'all a couple of scriptures. And uh, it talks about my late pastor. This is how he interpreted it. It talks about a nation. Okay, it's, book, it's the book of Revelation, chapter 13, I believe. Yes, chapter 13, and verse verse 11. And it said, behold, of course, this applies to the Antichrist too, but you have to understand that a lot of scriptures in the Bible have, you know, compound meanings and stuff. And not even, by the way, not everything in the book of Revelation occurs in chronological order. Some things do, like, you know, the rapture, tribute, preacher, relation, rapture, and so forth. But anyways, it says, and I, it's the book of Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. It says, Behold, I be, and I beheld another beast come up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. Horns represents um, strength, power, and authority. But anyways, two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. So America came in. Of course, our history is a lie. So America could have been around for centuries, for all I know, but... In times past, it was probably a less developed country or something. Or I, I even heard it was a territory of Egypt. Okay? But anyways, uh, and the interpretation of that scripture, of course, it applies to the Antichrist in the future. The church is taking out here. But it talks about America coming in like a lamb. Because you, as y'all very well know, let's go back to the 50s. You know, people had more morals. Yeah, it was racism. But, and, and Jim Crow and all this nonsense and foolishness. But and anti-black propaganda. But anyways, uh, but people had more morals than the women covered up. I mean, men were men, women, women, people had more class and we had more freedoms that we, we don't really, that we don't really have, to have now and stuff. And television wasn't as filthy and disgusting and, uh, or water, even then, it was wicked. It was evil then, don't misunderstand me, but it wasn't nearly as bad as he is now. There were as many illegitimacies and so forth. More people went to church and, you know, church music actually sound like gospel music. And like that contemporary mess they got now, they don't even 
the music, not only the lyrics are bad, the music isn't even good either. But anyways, it will come in like a lamb and stuff. And those lambs are, you know, docile and they're also a little naive and begin to speak like a dragon. That's what this great reset thing is all about. They're in the process of, of speaking like a dragon. And it's also meant because they know all believers are real people, okay? And another thing, this gender, this, this great reset, and of course Yahweh rules kind of, you know, it's kind of prophetic because he mentioned that part of the, I'm going to just say, this was a recent video, but I'm just adding this about the, the agenda of said re, the great reset. And part of that is, you know, AI technology. And I'm just saying they're going to try to pass laws and policies and other things to try to, you know, get rid of real humans, to eliminate real humans off the earth, okay? Because they're trying to depopulate the earth as really many humans, as really as of as many real humans. This is what depopulation is actually about. As, as many real humans before the new world order is put into place. Okay, and also William Brand, I was, I, was th I think I discussed this in the last video I did about this subject. But William Brand also said that and I've seen this in dreams myself. They would try to hunt us down like believers, down like dogs, would try to kill them. But according to the Book of Revelation, um, the uh, the earth is supposed to help the woman, and which is the the bride of Jesus Christ. Okay, and and when we uh get say our prayers and stuff, God answers these people's prayers especially if they're in the will of God. And we're going to say our prayers and just tell God to get us out of here. And somebody said, why Why is why is this going to come to place, come to pass? Because God needs to purge his, his, his people of, you know, all the nonsense and the foolishness. And of course, you know, he, he's been in the process. The process got kick-started basically when, you know, this current crisis. Of course, things happened before that time. But, you know, since this current crisis has begun, okay? Because, you know, he's trying to, we purify us so that we can be we be fit to take it be taken to heaven and stuff. You know, this is just part of a spiritual boot camp basically. It turns into mean lean mean fighting machines from like John Hades said, mama's little fat little biscuit eater to a lean mean fighting machine. Okay. Y'all know what how boot camp goes in the natural well the same applies in the spiritual as well. Because the Bible says without holiness no man should see the Lord, okay? So he got to get all the impurities purged. Got to put past us through the fire. So he has to, you know, purge all of the uh, impurities out of us and stuff. There's also another scripture that relates to us, but I forgot to pull that up. I have to do that next time. But anyhow, and there's another one before I close out. It says that, that well, this goes for another message about that California earthquake. But anyhow, it said that the earth, so the dragon's supposed to, you know, make kind of make war. And I guess... Of course, this applies to the Jews on the tribulation period, but, you know, the earth helps the woman. God helps the woman. So I've seen this in dream. I actually seen this in a couple of chick tracks, too, how they came out of the church. And there was this uh, couple, this Christian couple that went out to a sh uh, some kind of shack or cabin out in the middle of the woods. And just when, you know, the, these SWAT team looking people and helicopters and stuff was going to come and kill them or take them away to FEMA camps or whatever. And I, I had to get more into this later, but it's when they had done that, they just disappeared instantly, okay? Uh, they disappeared instantly. And uh, that's how I feel, and that confirmed my my suspicions of how the rapture is going to come. They even had some believers in jail, but I, in some dreams, I'm in jail, and, you know, the rapture happened, or I get this feeling that the rapture isn't too far behind. Excuse that noise. I'm just, I'm just getting a, um, some idiotic notification, but if there's no further ado, I'm out. Peace. Y'all be blessed. Shalom.